Welcome to our March 2023 Power Hour. I am Tessa Chapel and I live in Indiana, joined by Megan, my co-host out in outside Seattle, Washington. We are going to do two layouts tonight. We have handouts. If you're joining us already, you got them in your email. If not, you'll get them in email tomorrow or you can download them out of our uh, website shop, meganandtessa.com for free. So uh, tonight we're going to let Megan find me and flip me down to my layout. So those of you that know me, talk about similar things all the time. Soccer is, it's a, it's a lot of pictures for me. And so I wanted to do something green for the layout for tonight. And I pulled out the NST project recipe kit from two years ago. I think we decided this was 2021. And I knew I was going to hold some of these back for soccer. We don't have any soccer supplies currently as a company, but soccer is grass. And so I knew I also wanted to pull in these papers. And then I wanted to pull in some sort of large embellishment and decided to do the shamrock using the gemstone part. So those of you familiar with the cutting system know we have several different sets and the gemstone comes with this heart. And so I cut out some large hearts to do the shamrock for that. I'm going to do a different version tonight with another shape. Um, this layout, so depending on what you do, you want to follow along. We're, we're kind of doing two in one here. We're going to work on this side. And if you want, you can mirror image this for your other side. Part of this NSD set were these laser paper frames that you may remember came with the set. And I was pretty excited that I had pictures that would fit in this. So I actually just got these pictures last week. Kind of a funny story. You know, Campbell plays all the sports, basketball and soccer. And one of the moms that she has played basketball with this girl on a couple, she's not at her junior high, but she's been on a couple of rec teams with her. And she tagged me the other night on Facebook because she had, this is her daughter. And she had these pictures in Facebook and then tagged Campbell on there. She realized that it was Campbell and they played against each other back in 2019. And she had all these photos really? that Campbell was in because I, so I was so excited to yeah. have some great photos because a lot of times I'm videoing at the game. And back then I don't think I had as good of a game. So I don't even know what I have to do. And these photos. So I wanted to use this laser frame. And so there's kind of two sides to this. Some of you like symmetry and maybe you want to create this page and do two sides. Maybe you want to create this page and do two sides. Maybe you're like me and you want to go for the hodgepodge. So we're going to talk about this side and then we'll talk about this side. This is a pretty easy sketch to recreate just with your own punches and math. So for tonight, I was, I told Megan, I was struggling a little bit today to find photos for what I wanted to do. So I have so much athletic stuff in my feed. Um, but I did find a few photos for um, a Mother's Day in 2015 that I need to put into Emerson's book. And I was looking through the colors. Have you guys ordered Painted Garden? It is so pretty. Like we are doing class with this. We're doing page makers. Um, so if you're doing page makers and you, want, you might want to set. So I, I knew these pictures were going to look great with these papers. And I knew these papers will work well for the layout that I wanted to work with tonight. So this is all painted garden, which is a current set from creating. So as you look at picking your papers, what do I need? I need four papers for this side. I'm just doing some strips and then I'm gonna choose a cutting system pattern. And I wanted to do an oval. And I think I'm probably gonna, I've been looking at all my shapes. I think I'm gonna do the inside of this number three oval and I'm gonna do a, a flower shape. I'm gonna do some petals for a spring layout. Um, you could do circles. Uh, another alternative, if you don't have something that you want to cluster, some of our shapes are not ones you can get anymore, but you may have some of the bigger ones. You know, we've had the wavy frames along the way. We've had a star and um, we've had the hexagon, the pentagon. You could just choose one of your larger shapes and just do a single shape. You don't have to do a cluster of embellishments. You know, if I was doing Fourth of July or maybe something with school. This heart, this star is a, a perfect spot and um, perfect size for this. We've had these wavy frames in the past. 
we've had a celestial one. And I don't see a lot of people using some of these custom cupcake system templates. So that's kind of why I challenge you now, if you have them, find one that you can use. Circles and ovals are basic ones that we still have in stock and along with the gemstone. So you can make uh, shamrocks if you wanted to also. And then I am gonna actually recreate my right page with these photos. And so I knew basically I wanted to use this pattern on the right side. So I'm going to mirror the shamrock layout. It's just like a bird. Print. I, need the word. I needed to find a green, and I'm going to just going to use cardstock for my mat. And then we'll talk about whether or not you want to add in a strip. The strip really just pulls on uh, paper from the other side. So this is my right side. So I'm looking at my left side. I wanted to choose four papers I would coordinate with this. And I'm going to keep the consistency of having this print also be right down here. So I had this one. Then when I was choosing color, I needed to choose a wide section here at the top. I could either use one of these. I have to think about what shape. I think I'm going to do a flower. And so I decided I'm going to use this ombre paper to be the background. It's actually kind of a similar theme to this NFT paper, uh, not theme kind of the texture of the ombre. And I'm gonna cut the petals of my flower out of this one. So you have to think about what color do you want your shape to be when you uh, decide what you want the back of your paper to be. So there's a couple of decision points. So I'm gonna have this one on top. I know this is my print. When I was going through these papers, I really love this stripe. So I wanted to add in a little bit of stripe. I'm gonna put this along here at the very bottom. Then I needed one more color that I can use uh, to kind of pull these together. And I pulled out this kind of a deep rose magenta color that I will use. And then I can also pull this color over to my other page if I want to. So those are the four papers that I am going to be working with on my layout. I also pulled dark green cardstock for my mat. And then this is a green crosshatch paper out of the Painted Garden. That would work really nicely too um, for maybe the center of my flower or if I wanted other mats or other colors. My, I, I don't just know. have to <laughs> add that I should be writing these paper names down as you've been saying them for page makers class. We always have a big issue of who, what to name the papers. I like that green cross hatch. I'm totally writing it down. That's true. That's true. That is like, for those of you that take page makers, that is a legitimate thing we have to deal with at the end is naming the paper the same for the handout. So um, I'm going to look at this side real quick so you can see, I don't actually have pictures picked out for the left side of this. It's just going to be a general spring layout for her book. It will probably be a hodgepodge of pictures from the spring to coordinate with this Mother's Day layout. I only have these photos. I don't know who took them because we're not even completely center in there, but they are what they are. They're not on my phone. So I don't know who actually took them and where I got them. I just had them printed already. The other thing to consider is what you're going to build your page on. So you can choose like this top paper. You can, if you're using a page, you can build on the page and cut your strips. You can find maybe a base paper that came out of one of the paper packs. If you want to glue your pieces down or you, I can use this ombre paper as my base, but then I'm going to be covering up this entire bottom of it. And I get a little selfish sometimes with the paper. Like, do I want to give up that much of this paper? Cause I really like it. And the answer is probably not. So I'm going to cut my pieces and the theorem down on top on, on another base, which I actually don't think I, I need to grab. I usually use the ones out of our paper packs because they're thin and having that extra layer. So on your handout, you can choose how wide you want your strips to be. On the handout, I told you how wide they were on my demo, but you can adapt that. My biggest one, the top of it is seven inches. I need my arm out. The 
seven inches. And I'm going to cut as I'm going down, as if I'm going down on the page. So we stay together. The next one is three inches. And that is the one I decided to do the print. I can just see Jennifer's comment. She said that the digital papers have names. Have you ever looked at those? I am going to have to look at them again because I, if I remember correctly, sometimes they are individually named, but I'm trying to remember if they're named in a fashion that is not overly long <laughs> or something. I will have to look at them, but we'll definitely, we'll definitely take a peek there and uh, see if they, that will get us a little bit of a head start. Yeah, I don't ever look at the digital papers. So this one I just did with three quarter. And then my last one will be one and a quarter. And that will be my straight. Pull out some of the cover sheets for the paper to glue my pieces on them. Lay on here to make sure I'm happy with my choices. And I am, I think that's gonna look really pretty together. So I am going to use regular tape. I appreciate how Anne says it's more fun for us to come up with our own names, but then we end up with neutral to describe brown. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's Megan really has her handouts done first. And I wanna, she gets so like, even the messenger, you can tell that she is trying to hold back her annoyance with me. In the tone and then she's like i am just gonna let you name all the papers first before i ever begin <laughs> i will the, the issue with that is that i have all my handouts done already and then she comes through and she's like what do we name it this and i'm like ugh i have to go back uh, through and rename all my handouts that's work i don't actually i mean i don't know why so why is that because usually i'm not telling you rename it except sometimes i don't think her names make sense and sometimes they're better than my name so i go back and change all of mine Usually the problem is, is I haven't been super consistent all the way through because halfway through my handouts, I realized I should have chosen a better name. Yeah. Uh, these will probably be a little easier because they really are different colors. Well, the painted, ombre. that one is not called ombre. It's called painted, painted green. Okay, painted green. And are you gonna call it, call this paper coral or pink? Because it has both. They call it coral. I'm gonna, oh, well, they're asking the general poll. I'm gonna tell you guys, it's probably Tessa. I, I yeah, I've told her just to name them and send me the list. Uh, the, the bag of my cousin, this is a small pod. Um, it did sell out. I have a few in stock still. It will come back in June, I think they said. So I like it for my um, cutting system. I used to keep them in a tools organizer because I like them to just kind of be a mess. And this one, it keeps them in a smaller contained mess. Now I'm going to choose my shape. Like I said, I think I'm going to go with the inside of my oval number three. You really could get away with a lot of the ovals or circles. Um, if I were doing soccer or score, I would probably maybe even get out and uh, do a cluster of hexagons. If you don't have a custom cutting system, you could work with um, the larger die cuts you have or just punch shapes or just choose a large shape. I need to move them out of the way here so I can cut. I'm gonna 
Use the painted coral paper. Did I get that right? Yes, I believe you did. We have a couple of options here. So as you know, with the custom cutting system, there are three options of blade colors. When I did my shamrocks, I was cutting on the outside of the template and I did cut with the red blade. If I wanted to, if you want the look of a layered look, you could cut with uh, two layers of uh, paper or cardstock. So I could cut, if, if I'm on the inside, I could cut with green or blue, and then I could cut a red color of something else if I wanted to mat whatever my shape was. Um, I am not planning to mat, but I, maybe I'll do a couple as an example, because I do have, the back of this is actually a paper that will work nicely to layer with this side. Um, so I'll do a couple to show you how that would look. I'm, I want the, the bigger one to be the back. So I'm going to actually go with my green. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with five shapes and see how that layers together. Always nice and tricky to cut sitting down. Good. Swivel blades do make it easier. I'm going to cut a couple with the blue too. It'll give me a little bit varying size, which might add a little texture. This blue blade needs replaced. And a little bit of frayed edges there. It's probably why I have this old one that way. Okay, then I'm going to cut a couple with the red blade. Am I actually going to be using the back of the paper? So you're using oval three, right? Yeah, I'm using the inside of oval number three. And just as a reminder to people, when we talk about the ovals, number one is the smallest, number four is the largest. So number three would be the second largest. These ones I cut with red are bigger, those on the inside, so those I can mat on the outside of my petal. I thought this paper would work well too because of the painted ombre back. It could be Easter eggs too. I'm going to adhere the layers. Again, this is an optional step on the shamrocks. I did not do a back sided layer. That heart is bigger though, and I, I did make these a little smaller. It never fails when I cut the cutting system. I always have little bits to trim. I have graduation pages to do, but I um, saw someone saying they're in graduation. Well, that would be more than two pages worth, and I wasn't quite ready to dive into that yet. So you have to post that when you're done. So I would be curious to see how that looks. I have some petals here. If I need a center, I 
you have a choice if you want this to be a photo or not. On my shamrock layer, I have the photo here. So the smallest circle, the number one circle is perfect for a photo. I cut that with the red blade to the photo. And then my, my map behind it is green. I can choose whether I want this to be a photo spot or I want it to be an embellishment spot. Considering I don't have any photos picked out, I'm just gonna go with a smaller circle in the center and consider it a spot for embellishment or title or journaling when I get to that point. So I need to pick out a circle to do the center with. I have a couple of options. I have a fabulous new circle punch. I have the inside of number one. Inside number two is probably a bit bigger than the flower. It could be a small photo. So I'm going to default with using the center of the number one. I'm gonna cut it with the red blade. If I wanted it to be a layered effect, I could do it with the circle. And so I'll show you how that will work also. I could choose here. So I can do that my circle with the dark green and matte it. I also have the green crop patch. And then I have my leftovers of this one, which has a light green. I don't think I want to do the two tone. I could get the dark out of there. I think I might go with this cross patch. If they came out with more circles, I would buy them in the smaller sizes. I really like the way the new ones punch compared to the old. Do the uh, inside of this with the with the green blade and not the green, the red blade. Then flip the it over once you cut that circle. Looks like it's yellow on the other side. That'd be cheery. You want you want a yellow inside? I don't know. Let's see what's the green look like. I think I can. I think I like the green. I don't think I would go with the yellow unless I knew I had other yellow. That's pretty bold. And maybe I'm just a little yellowed out after putting together all, all the NFD stuff last night. <laughs> and everyone's liking yellow. Uh, maybe it looks more subtle. Maybe I won't commit. I just won't tape it down yet. <laughs> okay, then I need to adhere this. I want to maintain a little bit of spacing, kind of eyeball it to see how. Where they need to sit so that the middle will cover the middle. I usually kind of dry fit it and then I take piece by piece to adhere. I've had I've been wanting to make this flower for a while. I don't know why. I love the flowers, I guess. And then once I decided to do that shamrock layout. This is going to be the night. I'm just ready for. We had spring for a few days. It's back into the 30s. And I think most of us are. I might still like the green. See, I think the green's going to be what pulls over to the other side. So this is my layout for the left side. I'll hear that part down, be non-committal in that. So now I'm gonna work on my other side. It'll only take a couple of minutes. I'm gonna grab my base paper. I have- That this one is called ombre flowers. Ombre, this is ombre flowers? Yep. I do like ombre flowers. Oh, I'm sorry, it's ombre leaves. Ombre leaves, okay. So here is the layout I'm trying to copy. So on your handout, I did put the measurements of these mats. They're just quarter inches on each side. So this is four and a quarter by six and a quarter, four and a quarter by four and a quarter. My photos are, uh, I'm not going to cut them down. So I'm going to make my mat 
So the way that this frame went over the photo, the photo is smaller than, it was like three and, I had to trim them down to get that, yeah. And I don't wanna trim these. I'm, I am still going to do similar sizes. But I'm actually not, I kind of want to use the green cross out for the map. I think that I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to do four and a half by six and a half. larger mat effect. This photo I trimmed down to five inches. Five and a half, and I think that's it. Five and a half. So if you look at this, they're just layering the, the frame. So you do need to look at your photos. You might have to adjust depending on where you have the space to be able to overlap. Might need to adjust your orientation a little bit. Like I have more space up here to layer. Since someone took this photo off center. Probably one of the guys. I don't want it to layer both on top of this bottom one. I might need to. I decided this part probably. I could layer up here, I could layer here, I could layer here. It's kind of this little bit of a jigsaw. Where can you layer your photos? I'll have to think about that part. But the final step would be then how do I add in this similar embellishment? So this is my little shamrock I did with the mini heart punch, the double heart. And then I, this frame had shapes clustered around it. So after I decide where I want my photos to be, I pulled out a range of, when you dig through your punch drawer, what do you have? What have you collected? And I'm gonna create some foliage around the corners of it. Before I give it to Megan, I want to, I do want to talk about the chalk and pen. So that was something that I discovered worked well on this layout. On the shamrocks, I wanted to add a little bit of detail and I wasn't sure how. So I grabbed the template. And I realized with the chalking pen, so if you use a pen, you know, the blades are going farther around, but if you just use the pen and just trace it like you're tracing a child's hand, then I could get this effect around the shape and it added a little bit of subtlety in the texture and um, pretty easily. If you could also choose a pen color that is tone on tone to whatever paper that you're using, if the white is not a color that would show up. The chalking pen goes on clear and it dries chalky white. 
that looks kind of dark to me. And as it dries, it's going to lighten up a little bit. I don't know how well you guys can even watch that on camera. It's kind of like one of those magic pens. So it shows up well against dark stuff. So I had to decide, okay, my final step, how do I want to embellish with my flower? And I thought, well, if the chalking pen doesn't work, I also went and I dug through and found one of my coral pens. And I also had one of my green pens. The trick though, is I, I went on the inside of my template, so I can't easily trace along the outside like I could have if I had cut on the outside of the template. So I will have to go by hand. And so it may be a little bit more. And yeah, and then I decide to, after I decide my photo layout, and I'm gonna have photos here, this side looks like it's missing something. And so I can add in, I can cut another strip of this color and I could put a bar across here, assuming this is how my photos will lay. I'm gonna to wait to cut that because I'm gonna think about the width. However these photos lie, I want, to, I want that width to be, I don't want it to be to the top of here. I kind of want it to be a size that centers coming out across there. And that will allow me to pull up the color between the two and I'll, I'll pull in the accent. So I do wanna play with my flower just a little bit, even though I'm running out of time. And we will look and see how the chalking looks. I'm just gonna go along the edge and see if we can even see the white. I know most of us do not have a very steady hand. The chalking pen, you do wanna try to go in one, one stroke. The more you stop and start, you're gonna see more dots. You're gonna see kind of heavier ink spots. Then I wanted to see too how it would look with the purple. I'll do the one beside it while we're waiting on that one. Coral is going to show up darker for sure. Probably more that you can probably see that one easier on camera. The chalking, it really isn't showing up. It is lighter paper though, so I'm not surprised. I don't think I want to put the green in. And then the light, the fine tip would be obviously a skinnier. It's just a similar effect to also, sometimes people do the dots or the dashes, the stitching effect. See Megan has done on some of her layouts before. It's okay if it's not perfect, especially if you're doing a flower, we know similar. Pops out some of those. Books. Probably go back and do that one too. I don't think that chalk is going to show up as well on the light as it does on the dark. But I could use the chalk. So if I do decide to commit to the green, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do the green, I could also add in some dots. If I wanted to add detail. Can you even see the chalking on the camera? Or not? It just adds a little subtlety and texture. You can't see it super well. Uh, yeah, it's starting to appear on the dark green. You can see it on the dark green. So I will, while Megan's doing her layout, I will decide on how I'm going to do my final layering over here. And then I'm going to add in a strip of the appropriate size. So you want to decide where your photos are or your maps are going to be first. And then I'm going to punch some um, corner embellishments to coordinate. And then this side will stay like this until I decide what photos I'm going to use. So thank you all. And like I said, when you're doing this tonight, you can do this page and double it, or you can do this page and double it if you don't like the two concepts together. All right, any questions? You can put them in the chat. All right, I'm gonna switch over here. 
All right. So thank you, Tessa. And I am Megan Jacks, and I'm out here in what is right now sunny and beautiful on uh, North Seattle. A little chilly out there. I think we haven't even hit quite, uh, we're in the maybe low 50s right now, but it's beautiful and sunny and bright. I love this time of year. So um, I'm going to switch over to my desktop and we'll get dive right in since Tessa took forever. <laughs> I have to give her a hard time. It's an obligatory thing, like when you're fighting with your sibling and you just have to give them a hard time. So here's the layout. I was in a very Halloween mood this weekend. Um, so carried this over, did a couple of the virtual crop layouts with the um, Halloween. And I needed uh, a single page layout, uh, just go into Cody's book of him with the pumpkin that he carved. And of course, um, all set for Halloween. And I don't know. I just, I've, I've really been into angles too recently. So um, this is how this all took shape. Um, so I show it here as a single page layout. Tonight, I'm actually going to turn it into a two page layout and I'll talk about how we cut our paper. So if you have a pencil, you might want to have that available. I probably should have given you the diagram for cutting the second piece, but I didn't have it done in time to send out with their um, handout. But I'll show you quickly how we can just, um, it's basically the opposite of this piece here. So if you're making a single page, you're going to follow along this direction. We're going to put one page together at a time. Uh, you're going to need a background piece. And so I used Happy Hauntings here for tonight's demo. I have pictures of when I went with my middle child to VidCon in Anaheim, California, which is basically um, content creators, a video convention is what VidCon stands for. It's content creators, TikTok, YouTube, and whatnot. So basically, I felt like a really old, old, out of touch person. But my child had a great time. I got some great pictures. So I'm going to be using some uh, pictures from that. I'm going to be using the You Got This collection. So I've got nice. some, some tie dye oh, yeah. um, stuff. I've got the denim papers. In fact, the denim papers are my background. So I'm going to be using the ripped jean denim. And then you want a piece of paper um, that we're going to like both sides of. We're going to cut it on an angle. And we want to, we like use uh, both sides. We want to make sure we like both sides. So I am using this. I like that it's kind of a solid on one side. And then the opposite side has those multicolored stripes. The stripes really do pull in a lot of the colors from uh, the VidCon uh, convention, all that kind of stuff. It was um, very colorful, very fun. And then I'm gonna need some, you can see here in my sample, I punch um, the zebra stripe. I used it with black shimmer and I also use black shimmer on the background here for matting my photos. So I have chosen um, white cardstock. I'll be using white cardstock to punch. I wanted to keep this really light and airy. I didn't wanna to be too dark. So I, instead of going with darker, say a navy or something, I went with white. Let's see how that looks. So I don't like it, I'll punch navy or I'll punch something else, but I'm gonna start with white. And behind my photos, I'm actually, instead of using the same color of cardstock, I'm actually going to go ahead. I think I'm gonna use some of this bright yellow, um, or it's kind of a mid-tone yellow, uh, the tie-dye paper, the opposite side is the blue, white, and green. So those are the papers I'm working with. To get started, um, I'm gonna put aside my uh, yellow and the white cardstock. And I'm going to start with this 12 by 12 sheet. You may only, if you are only making a one page layout, you only need a six by 12. Um, we're going to start off here with step one. So the biggest thing with step one is I need to think about what direction I want my pieces here to go. This side definitely has a direction to it. I want my stripes um, of my piece. This striped side is going to be where I show the orange. So I'm actually gonna cut this all with my stripe side up so I can keep track of the um, orientation of my stripes. And I'm gonna cut it in half right down the middle here. So grab my trimmer, I'm gonna cut this to six by 12. over here to six inches and I'm gonna cut this piece in half. If you have a scrap that you're working with, cut it down to six by 12. I have two pieces. I'm gonna set one piece to the side for the moment.
And you're gonna need a pencil. And of course I, I clean, right? And you know when you clean, that never leads to anything good. Oh, there it is. Okay, so my pencil, or so my, what I need to cut here, the piece that we see down at the bottom, the six by 12, this larger piece, this lower right-hand piece is the piece that stays face up. So I've got my piece here face up, I'm my stripe pattern up. So I wanna measure one inch on the left side, grab my cutting mat. I'm gonna measure up one inch on the left side, one inch right there. And then I'm gonna use my trimmer to cut the diagonal. And what's gonna happen is I will be able to then flip this piece down and it will create that alternate, that opposite angle there. So I've got it marked at the one inch, one inch on the left edge, one inch from the bottom. And now this is gonna be a little bit of a tricky cut here. It does not cut from end to end. You're gonna have to use a pair of scissors. So what I'm putting in this, I've got my pencil mark is lined up on this bottom cut line. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna actually on my trimmer, I'm gonna bring out those sight guides and it's gonna help me see, do I have this upper corner lined up? And there I can see my, the black line of the sight guide comes through there and I can see I'm at the corner. If I move this up, I can see, yep, my sight guide is right there across that pencil mark. So I should be good to go ahead and cut. Now I can see here, look, it did not cut completely apart. So this is where I'll use my scissors and come in and complete that cut. So now this piece will flip down and that gives us the two pieces here, the two, um, the two angles. So if I come in here, we can see how that's gonna start to look on the page. So now when I was putting this together, now it's like, okay, I feel like I've got unfinished edges. All right, that this angle here and this angle here, they just need a little bit more. Let me show you the pictures that I'm gonna be including. So you guys can see, I'm gonna have, I'm using four by sixes here in my sample. I think I used four by five. You can cut as you need, trim them down to the size you need. They will angle in behind here. They will tuck in a little bit. I can trim if I need to. I don't have a lot when I, this, you know, I don't have a lot to trim off unless I wanna start cutting down the sign. And I really wanted to leave the sign in place. But now I needed something that was gonna come along these edges. One of my favorite things to do is to use picket fence and to hide the picket edge and just to use trim it off so that you have just these um, woven, the pieces that you can weave. And that's what you expose. You expose, expose that flat edge with the, um, the fence effect. It's similar, zebra stripe does similar. You can see here, we have a flat edge and then we have that, um, those almost looks like, you know, like rugged fence posts back there, or the zebra stripes. Picket fence can do something similar. Picket fence is a little bit more um, polished. Zebra obviously has all the different um, widths and a little bit more um, unevenness to it. So it kind of depends on the, the look that you want. It works, uh, zebra worked really well for the Halloween. It was, you know, a little bit creepy maybe. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, I want to show you what it looks like if we were to use a uh, picket fence for this one. You can play around with it. You can really use any um, edging here you want. 
Maybe it's a sticker. Maybe it's some other um, punch you want to use. I talk about using an edge style punch, but in all honesty, you could do anything. Um, you could have it tuck in behind. Maybe it sticks halfway out. Maybe it layers on top. You need about two 12 inch lengths. You'll have one length that's going to go um, part way on this other, the back side. We don't need to go the full length because we cover it up. And then here on the front side, you can see when I talk about step four, when you attach the other 12 inch length, you can actually cut it in the middle and separate those pieces because you're going to have a photo that covers that up or a mat or embellishment or something that covers those things up. So I'm going to go ahead and cut with picket fence. I'll punch that one because I want to see what it looks like and show you guys. So there it is. We're going to punch, I'm going to punch picket fence with the white hard stock. This is actually the inserts to the 12 by 12 top loading pages back when we had white as the insert. What I'll do is I cut punched one. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. And I wanna trim it a little bit past the picket fence. Actually, what I'm looking for is I'm gonna bring the very edge, this edge, the bottom of the uh, cutout to the edge of the, um, the dashed line to the right of the cut edge. And then that should be, give me about an eighth of an inch past. So you can see there. So now what I can do, to see what this is going to look like before I start punching more, I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this yellow tie-dye paper. I'm going to trim it. I'm, I don't have to trim very much. I don't need to cover the entire length here. I only, or the entire width. I only need to cover the part that I'm going to have sticking out past the piece here, right? So you can see, I don't need a ton. I'm going to cut it at I'm gonna cut it at half an inch. That should be plenty. Use my repositionable adhesive and I'm gonna come in here and just put some on that edge and I only need to cover up so that I have enough of that yellow showing through the top portion of the cutouts. And then now what I'll be able to do is see what does that look like? Kind of hard to see. So the other thing that I could do here, because it, like I said, it's hard to see. I think I'm going to try some canary. I think with the tie dye, because it has some intense yellow parts with some lighter yellow parts, I think I would prefer actually to see a little bit more consistent of this in through here. So I'm going to swap out that tie dye yellow for some canary. And that's easy enough to do. I'll just peel this tie-dye strip off. So somebody said they got white in there. I wonder if they're back to using regular color, the, the white now in the top loading. I seem to order them in bunches, like I'll order five or six and that gets me through for a while. Yeah, I think I like a little bit more of that yellow showing through. So it's actually gonna be
and I'll punch one more. I actually need a total of three more because I'm going to mirror this on the other side. So I am just going to punch a few of these with the If you're using something like zebra stripe or maybe another border, you might be able to cut that border in half. What I have found with picket fence is it's really hard to cut the picket edges off. You almost have too skinny of an edge at the top. So I find when I do this, uh, I want this look with it. I just use the one side with, um, with zebra stripe, I was able to just cut it in half. And when I cut zebra stripe in half, I just cut it with scissors. Um, it was easier just to cut it down the middle rather than trying to use my um, trimmer. Sometimes with those narrow pieces, things wiggle a little too much. I just cut it down the center because I wasn't too worried if I was perfect because I was gonna ultimately hide that edge underneath the angled pieces. Trimmer, cut both these pieces down, then I'll need to make one more. You will need an element to go across the top of your page. You could use, um, I could use picket fence again if I wanted to. Maybe I'm going to use a another, just completely different. I haven't quite figured that part out. In the original layout, I used the um, zebra. I put some two-inch blocks of these two colors behind it. And then um, layered in, they had a, one of the a laser cut borders was really it worked well, had that same golden color to pull in that color from down here up to the top. That's really what I wanted to do from a design aspect. I wanted to take these colors that were down here and this, um, I wanted to come and put those same colors up here at the top. Um, I hold my, it's, 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 just personal preference on how I hold my paper. Um, I don't know why I always typically default to holding it to the bottom. I think it's just my left hand is down here and it's just easier for me to hold this instead of reaching clear up here. Because if I'm holding it down here and pushing up, I don't know, it's just personal preference on why I hold my paper at the bottom. Some of it's like I go top when I'm standing and bottom a lot of times when I sit. And let's see, I'm gonna cut these again to about a half an inch. So I need three half inch strips to go on these pieces. And we'll come in across the top and get these put on there. And then I will take you over and show you um, We'll cut that second piece to make the two page layout. The cut is basically done the opposite of the first one, but I'll show you in just a minute. I'm still working on how I'm positioning my, my blue silicone mat. Have you figured out, Tessa, how you leave it readily accessible? Sitting down here where below my mats where I used to just do it on the table. 
I, I have mine actually like half of it is actually tucked in under my cutting mat. Cause remember I use that faux cutting mat with the contact paper and then I can just flip it up. That's my bright That's idea for tonight. Mine's going down the front of the table on my lap because I really probably would have been fine with like three by 12. I think I tried there and the problem was the way I fit my legs are kind of um, angled and it kept falling off onto the floor and then it would pick up all sorts of hair from my constant shedding. All right, so we can see how that's gonna effectively go in as such. I will go ahead Before I jump into that second page, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Um, now my photos are six by four by sixes. They're six inches high. I have already cut this paper down from 12 inches. It's no longer 12 inches. Remember I cut a piece off and I wanted to see if it would work. So I can't really just make a big mat here to put behind there. So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna make some strips that will go at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna keep all my photos butted up next to each other. So they're not gonna have a mat between them. I could cut some thin strips to go between, but honestly, I don't have a lot of ability to cut too much down unless I cut down this center picture. And I think I'll be fine with just that little bit of yellow at the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna cut a quarter inch, make sure I'm dealing with my 12 inch length here. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a 12. I'm gonna cut a quarter inch that will go at the top and the bottom. It's all about adapting. Cut it maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. I'm gonna need a four of them because I have a two page layout. Okay. This will come up at the top. This will be down at the bottom. And I'll be able to layer these pieces on. They will overlap a little bit. So obviously once I started hearing things will hold into place a lot better. And I'll mat this photo and that's gonna go on as such. So that's kind of the gist of how this layout's coming together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the other side and show you how to cut the second piece over here. So I'm gonna grab my other piece. So this is my other six by 12. I want to mirror, I wanna mirror this being, I still want the stripes to be my bigger piece. So basically what I'm gonna do is I can almost flip this paper around and where I see the orange, I want to see the, the piece here. And where I see that purple is gonna be the green that I use the other side. So you can see here in this, um, in this picture, I'm gonna measure one inch down from the upper right this time. One inch down from the upper right. I'm just gonna use my ruler here, one inch down from the upper right. If you have your piece here and you want to draw on your handout, you could say second page, draw your rectangle. This is a six by 12 rectangle. And I wanna make my line at one inch on the upper right of that. This is where I'm gonna draw my mark. And then I will cut on the diagonal to that piece. So 
I'm gonna cut, put it in my trimmer, come back here and use my sight guides again. Get it lined up so I can no longer see where I'm cutting. Use that, the, those, the plastic pieces that pull out has a black line on it that tells you where your trimmer is gonna go. Finish the cut with a pair of scissors. I could trim down the background paper if I wanted to. Um, it is really going to be uh, depending on how you want to do it. The problem I do a little bit that you run into, you can see if I were to cut this at the bottom, I'm probably going to need something back there to stabilize it because I'm coming over with real thin pieces here. It does come across so you can play around with it a little bit for um, the purpose of this particular um, project. It was just easier for me to just use whole background pieces. I could come in and punch out pieces if I want. I don't want the ripped piece showing. So I'm going to flip this around so that it will be covered up with photos. I have. These pieces will come in here. And then I have more four by six photos that will be put And I don't think I'm going to, for my, this one, since I'm using the four by sixes, I don't think I'm going to worry about putting a border at the top. Um, I think that when it push comes to shove, I'm going to have a lot going on further down. I could have some sort of um, embellishment up here at the top, simple embellishment. There's some titles out of the, um, the You've Got This embellishment pack or stickers that would work. I'm gonna use a peekaboo pocket. These are just some um, little um, happenstance. A funny thing, our hotel, we were at the Anaheim Convention Center area and we could look north out of our hotel room and we could see that's the Hollywood or the, Mar is it the Marvel Galaxy of the Guardians Tower of Terror thing now? And we could see all of the, every night we saw Disney fireworks. So it was kind of funny. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut these down to square. Um, this is me enjoying the pool. It was like 95 degrees. It was glorious. Um, we had been so cold that spring here in Seattle. I was so excited to have some nice hot temperatures to enjoy um, sitting out in the sun. And that'll go up here. And then it'll flip open with the peekaboo pockets. And I'll have some journaling in there to be able to talk about, um, you know, more of what the trip. I have more pages I'll do for this. Uh, if I wanted to, I had picked out these um, mats. They just have a little bit of a grid on them and I was thinking I would use those to map these photos. Again, just try to keep it light and airy. I don't want anything too heavy. So I'll probably do that and then come in with some additional um, details and such in there. So single page, double page, just kind of fun, um, a little bit something, I don't know. You can also of course rotate if you need to, you can rotate the whole kit and caboodle. The angle concept is definitely not new. Hopefully you have some fun with your borders though of making the borders. You can angle both pieces and so forth. So I'll work on getting these all put together and hearing things gonna take just a little bit maybe finagle a little bit how I'm doing with the embellishments, get those final details in there, and then we'll be able to share those layouts with you when they're all complete. So 
Um, that is, if there's any questions, I, I'm going to scroll back up through. Yes, the Disney fireworks are pretty, um, pretty fun. They're pretty loud. We could always tell what time it was, and we'd always rush over, turn off all the lights um, in the ho hotel room to uh, be able to see them better out our window, of course. Um, so it was, it was neat. It was neat to see that every night. We were there for, I think, like four different, four nights. So it was fun. Um, and, uh, but that's, that's always, that's, that's power hour for us. Um, you guys on the handout, you will see the hashtag to use for, um, if you share your layouts in the ideas and inspiration group. So we would love to see them. And, um, if you are, I can share them with photos, that's fantastic. If they don't have photos, Hey, that's great too. Made with creative memory stuff or made with other, whatever you got in your stash. That's always great to see. So just be sure to hashtag those. We will do a drawing or Tessa will do a drawing. I, I let her do all that. Um, that will be next week. So I used to, we usually give you about a week. So if you could have them posted by the 21st or by the end of the day on the 21st, the 22nd or the 23rd, we will go ahead and get those drawn for you. Just a reminder on Thursday, this Thursday, the 16th at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, we are doing our project um, workshop. Tessa, do you have the layouts available there to show what they look like? There, these, this is the stuff that's in the National Scrapbook Day um, customer bundle. So it's a project recipe. There are two additional two-page layouts, two single-page layouts, and two borders. We're going to be putting those all together on Thursday. It's a free workshop. Um, go ahead and sign up if you have not already. If you can't make it, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and record it. We'll have that uh, recording available um, so you can have a little bit of guidance as you're putting those together. And um, Tess is going to have some great tips. I know she discovered a few things when she was putting together her, 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 she put the kit together today. I'll do it tomorrow. So we know what we're talking about on Friday or on Thursday. It's always helpful. Um, but I'm glad that she discovered a couple of things so she could tell me uh, what to do. And she'll be able to tell you what to do to make sure that um, basically you want your stripes going all the right way. So she will share that with us. It is 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. So you can go to meganandtessa.com, Megan, two G's, Tessa, two S's, dot com, and you'll see um, the option to sign up for that. You might have to go to spring classes. There's a little heading at the top, and that's the free class. We also do have the uh, Painted Gardens uh, Project <sighs> Page Makers Workshop. That is going to be on the 28th. That's, so that's in a couple weeks, two weeks. That'll be an evening class. We'll be putting together six layouts using the Painted Gardens. And then on Thursday, the 30th, um, at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific class, we're going to put do uh, the cards, a National Scrapbook Day cards. We have, I have 12 cards for you guys to put together. You can see what those cards look like on our website. Super cute. I'm excited to share them with you. And Tessa will, of course, have a layout to go with that as well. So I think that covers us up for the, if you guys are in um, our um, winter frolic, you're coming down to the last 24 hours, right? To get those layouts posted. Is that what we said, Tessa? They have about another 24 hours. If you've had a ton of fun doing winter frolic, we're going to do it again in the summer. We always do summer scrap challenge. More details will be coming on that later. Um, the next, the date of the next power hour, um, I'm pretty certain it is the 11th. Is that right, Tessa? That's what I was going to say, but I don't really have my calendar. I am pretty certain it's the 11th. I don't think it's the 18th. Um, let me convince my calendar to come up. So I know I have it on my calendar because I asked Tessa and she confirmed it for me. It is the 11th. Um, April 11th is going to be the next one. And um, usually we're about the second Tuesday of the month, unless we run into um, hiccups with our kids' sports schedules, right? So, all right. Um, Before we sign off though, I was going to flip back because I did pretty much finish my Oh, lineup. you got it all finished. Okay. Let me flip to Tessa's. Those be curious. You're dying to know. I know. So I decided this is how I decided to overlap them. I would have preferred to cover up a little more of the empty space, but um, so I overlapped one on top of the other and the other, and then I pulled out a couple of punches um, that I had in my stash. This is Daisy Bouquet uh, Leaf Trio, and then there's another one. I'll post the link to. It's called Rock Fern. It's actually by Bunch Bunch. Is that what it's called? 
So it's not cyan, but it has a little bit more of the lighter leaf that, that went with the paper. So I just tucked some mostly monochromatic in around it. And then I did choose a one inch strip once I had the layout. So it kind of fills in this space here. I'm gonna do a title that says Mother's Day once I decide what my ABCs are. Um, and then inside the little flower, so I punched these out of that coral paper. I don't know what, I have all of my, I don't use a lot of jewels, but I put all the ones I do have in one of these cases. And so when the mood does strike me, I just flip through here. And so I found these, I don't know what these came out of though. They have a little bit of speckle to them, not so much a gemstone and put them in the center um, of my daisy. So I chose Did the daisy. Did those come with Daydreamer? Um, I don't think Daydreamer had jewels because it came in the box. It was in a box? Daydreamer. Oh, no, oh, no, that's right. So maybe it was um, one of the Valentine's Day ones, the sweetheart. With blue and green? Oh, it has blue and green on it? I thought it was pink. These, the embellishments have like this coral, has a green and an orange and a blue. Oh, okay. I don't know, someone on here probably is very jewel savvy. Oh, it's probably one of the water collections, but not the recent one. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't pay attention to those things. I don't. I have no, literally no clue. But now when I pull embellishments, I'm going to be looking to see where they possibly You're going to, you need to write it with a Sharpie on there, on the plastic. Um, so yeah, I'll do my title there and then I, it will pull over the floral color. Um, I debated, you know, whether I wanted to make something for the corner, but I decided not to just to keep my flowers where they are. So I love painted garden. I'm going to order another set for class. I think I will use it a lot. Very fun. Okay, that's my show and tell. I will take pictures and post them in the group tomorrow. And winter, if you're in winter frolic and you have the survey, it's posted in guide one. Everything that has the information you actually need to know is in guide one. For your survey. Any other questions before we let it go? All right, I can't wait to see what you all do. Joy. Thanks so much.